Hello, everyone. I found this amazing paper uh, called The Mathematical Perspective on Transformers. Um, I wanted to have a very short video on it uh, because I thought it's a nice way of thinking about transformers from a maybe dynamical system perspective. And I thought uh, they list a couple of very interesting theoretical questions, uh, which I hope could attract uh, mathematicians to actually look into those and work on those types of problems. Uh, so I really hope you enjoy. Um, and I'm not going to cover, of course, all the details and all the proofs in this uh, in this talk. Uh, but of course, you could refer to this awesome paper in order, you know, to fully understand the picture. I'm just going to try to give you a gist of the results and what has happened in this paper. Right, so in this paper, what they are really thinking about is they are thinking about transformer models as a set of interacting particle system. Um, we're going to kind of explain what this is, but it's really an interesting way to think about transformers rather than, you know, uh, this uh, feed forward, attention, feed forward, attention, feed forward. Uh, what they are really thinking about is more like from a consensus dynamical system perspective. So let's go through those a little bit. So uh, at a very, very high level, right, uh, what is a transformer model doing? So transformer model, all it's doing really is that it's operating on a sequence of vectors of a specific length. So imagine you give it a vector, which is uh, made of uh, n of length n, right? So they, this is like uh, a paragraph, if you will, or a sentence which has uh, a, a c length n for that sequence. And every token in that sequence is actually embedded into a d-dimensional space, right? So imagine you have xi uh, for i in 1 to n, which is the length of your sequence, and each xi is a vector in, in d-dimensional space. So this is really like the embedding of the um, of the input, so to say, where, for example, a vector can uh, um, represent a word, so each xi could be a word, and the sequence can represent a paragraph. So we call the whole sequence typically a prompt, and we call each vector a token. Now, in this paper, they are going to call a token and a particle kind of interchangeably. And now what the transformer model is doing typically is that it's recursing uh, this form of attention feed forward, followed by attention feed forward, followed by attention feed forward, and so on. So in order to get the value at a layer L, right, ZL, what we do is we do the following operation, right? So we take ZL minus one, the L minus one value, then we add to that an attention operation on ZL minus one. And we also add to that a, a feed forward uh, uh, operation on ZL minus one plus attention of ZL minus one. Now the attention layer is actually nothing but this summation of softmax of A, Q, A, K transpose A, V. And the uh, feed forward layer is just a standard feed forward network, which is just a nonlinearity sigma, like typically Lipschitz nonlinearity of A, the W, uh, first W, and multiplied by the second W. So this is just the standard way right, transformers operate. Um, let's just uh, understand that a little bit more in details. Uh, so the typically in transformer, we call H the number of heads, like how many heads I have. We call Q to be the query matrix. So QLH is the query matrix in layer L for head H. And then we have a key matrix, which is KLH, the key uh, for uh, layer LH, transpose that. Then you multiply that by the value, by A times the value matrix. Now, the softmax here is typically a row-wise execution that is done on this uh, resulting matrix out of those operations. Because notice that if you multiply matrix by matrix, matrix by matrix, transpose, you will get a matrix, right? And then the softmax consequently will happen row-wise, right? And then it will give you like a stochastic uh, row-wise matrix, right? Now, the input itself in, in this formulation, I called it Z0, where I just uh, kind of reformatted my input sequence into a matrix uh, of size D by N, where D is the um, size of the token embedding and N is the length of the sequence. Right, so that's kind of how we're used to kind of thinking about transformers, right? 
Now, what the authors do is that they notice that in many practical implementation of transformers, we make use of layer normalization, and they contest that this layer normalization is doing an element-wise standardization of every particle in the layer, and that is constraining the particles to evolve on axis-aligned ellipsoids. They pick these axis-aligned ellipsoids in this paper to be a unit sphere, and then they also show evidence of that, that uh, you know they, they claim that, okay, this Albert X large model kind of demonstrates that, and also this has been used in Mistral AI. Uh, maybe that's a selling point, maybe not, but, uh, but the idea for now is that they're assuming that everything is going to evolve, happen on this unit sphere. Now what they do is they borrow idea from neural ODE, right, where they transform this uh, discrete kind of layer-wise operations into a continuous time system. And they are able to show that the evolution of every token is governed by the following equations. So they're able to show that if you're going to do this layer normalization, everything is going to evolve on this unit sphere. And of course, we have sequence of length n. So we start from the initial conditions provided by the inputs, right? So that's what the input is, right? This is the length n vector. Each is a d dimension, uh, meaning that uh, that's the embedding of the input sequence. And then what we're going to do is we're going to evolve on this unit sphere. We're going to, you know, uh, 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 follow a dynamical system. And that dynamical system is given by this equation. So for now, what they are doing is they are focusing their analysis on a single head, right? So they don't have multiple head kind of attention or, or like, you know, a multi-complicated, let's say, transform model. This is like an easier transformer model. But what is happening is that, you know, your token XI, right, is actually evolving, or your particle, as they call it in this paper, is evolving according to this equation. And every time it evolves, it's being projected back to, you know, this tangent plane of the units. So in details, right, what is happening is that this evolution, uh, as you see in the exponent, we see the query matrix, we see the key matrix, we see the value matrix. This is called a partition function, uh, like from statistical mechanics, right? This P is the projection operator, and this X dot I is just the evolution of the token or the particle. The partition function is just simply the sum over all the tokens, uh, 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 sorry, of, over from k equals 1 to n, of this e to the beta qt xi kt xk. It is greater than 0. And beta is a temperature parameter or an inverse temperature parameter, uh, and it is positive. In our implementations, we sometimes use d to the power minus 1 over 2, right, as our implementation. So, so what they are saying, right, is that the transformer is a flow map that is actually happening on this unit sphere, right? So what it's doing is that it's taking the input and then it's evolving the input on that unit sphere according to this equation. So here you see the inner product between the query and your token of interest versus the key and all the other tokens multiplied by the value and the other tokens that, that you have, you know, J1 to N. And then there's we're, we're staying on this kind of, you know, unit sphere using this projection operator. Okay. Now what they do is they notice something really interesting, actually. They notice that if we actually look at this equation in details, we can notice a term which is e to this inner products, right, between the query xi and the key xj, divided by the partition function, which is like the self-attention mechanism that we actually see in these transformers, right? And in fact, it's really interesting because that's the main, maybe, novelty, right? of the transformer is this self-attention mechanism. So really, if you want to think about what they are saying, right? So they are saying that the transformer is a flow map happening on this SD minus one. So it's taking your input sequence and evolving it on that sphere. And the 
coupling or how this evolution is happening, it's actually happening according to the self-attention matrix. So this matrix is kind of the nonlinear coupling mechanism that is allowing the particles or the tokens, right, to evolve on this sphere. So that's kind of how they think about transformers. So that's what the transformer is doing, right? It's taking this input sequence and then it's following these equations of dynamics in order to evolve the tokens or the particles on this unit sphere. And what's dictating the mechanism of evolution is this attention module or attention matrix. Now, for them to get some results, they do even more simplifications, right, than, you know, not assuming heads or not considering feedforward layer at this stage, right? But what they do is they assume that the key, the query, and the value, they are all constant. So they don't depend on time, but also they are identity. And now that in turn gives us the following uh, kind of dynamical system, right? So if you just set Q, K, and V to identity, you will get this equation. So now this equation, if you look at it into detail, you can nicely connect it to consensus-based optimization or consensus-based formalizations uh, and make connections to well-known models like the Kuramoto model and the Krauss models uh, of nonlinear systems to synchronize oscillators, right? And, and those are really, this is a nice uh, link that they actually kind of make in this paper. And I think it has also maybe been attempted for ResNets in previous papers, but, but this is kind of for transformers. That's, that's what they are trying to, to do. So now you might be happy and say, okay, you know what, I'll just apply all this massive literature into, you know, my, my problem in order to understand what is going to happen, for example, in asymptotic regimes. Will clusters occur between these particles? Will they all arrive to a consensus between them? What really goes on, you know, as we execute this transformer dynamics? So it turns out, unfortunately, that while there's a lot of literature on this, it's not an easy one-to-one -one application of those because we have nonlinearity in the parameters of our consensus equations. So, so really to analyze this, we have to work a bit harder. And that's, of course, what they have done in this paper. And, uh, and, and then, and then they, they are able to show that some clusters will appear, as I will mention in a second, uh, uh, by extending kind of analyzing the literature uh, or extending on top of that literature. So in reality, what they are able to show is the following, right? So this is maybe one of the main results of the paper. I emphasize this is one of the main results. There are other results which are related to the convergence rates, which are also very, very interesting, right? But here I just put the main essence uh, of one of the results, right? So imagine n is greater than or equal to one. Imagine beta is positive. So the inverse temperature is positive. Number of tokens is bigger than one or equal to one. And now suppose that the dimensions are bigger than n, right? They also relax this assumption uh, or, or this assumption in the paper in another result as well. Now what they are showing, right, is that if we take the these dynamics, right, which we derived from the transformer uh, operations by setting a Q and K and V to identity, and let's say we have a, uh, well, it's a Cauchy problem, uh, uh, which is given by, by, by a form of this equation, which you can write in terms of vector fields. That's what they do in the paper. And they have this initial condition, xi0, so your starting input, right? And now let's call this xi uh, the solution to this Cauchy problem, right? So this problem of, uh, of this uh, 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 differential equation uh, from that initial condition. What they are able to show is that there will almost surely, so with the probability one, right, there will almost surely exist an X star in the SD minus one. So there will exist an X star in that sphere we are working on and two constants C and lambda such that the norm between x of t minus x star is less than c e minus lambda t for all i and for t positive. So what they are able to show, right, is that there will exist an x star where kind of everything will go to it. 
So there will be one X star where this X of T from wherever you start, right? And then you just do this evolution. Sorry, not from wherever you start, but you start from here, from this point and do this evolution. What will happen is that they will actually ultimately converge to this X star, right? So that X star does exist. So what they have is what we call a convergence towards consensus. So they're able to show that if you start from here and follow the dynamics that we just discussed briefly, you are able to show that there will exist one X star where everything is going to it. So in other words, we have a convergence towards that consensus. So in other words, there will be a cluster in this high dimensional world that will emerge, right? Now, this is at odds a little bit with the empirical evidence we have, right? Because we know that the transformers have a lot of diversity and so on. So the question is, how can we improve that, right? However, what is really interesting from here is that if we think about the transformers from this perspective, we are able to get a very nice of properties uh, on, on, you know, on how this is behaving, uh, how is this token, right, evolving, right? Like what is going on with those tokens, right, that are uh, evolving? And, and then he's able to show, uh, or the authors are able to show that there will exist this cluster when this would happen. Now, of course, this is uh, not the complete story. And in fact, in the paper, they extend the previous work, uh, the previous result they had, but also they pose a set of very exciting research questions, which we might uh, want to consider, or if somebody is interested, you know, uh, could actually have a look at, because I think this is exciting. It's like a very, maybe formal set of questions that we can actually think about, uh, or mathematicians can help us think about. So first of all, we know that, you know, they, there doesn't exist one, you know, cluster, right, from practice. So, so the question they are asking is, before I collapse, you know, into this X star cluster, right, which I showed before, right, um, does there exist M less than N clusters where the particles or the tokens will stay in for a very long time? before we collapse, right? So that's an open question, right? That question is, do we have this M less than N clusters, you know, for a long period before the collapse happens? The second one, right, is what will happen when we don't have identity query key and value matrices, right? If you remember in what we analyzed, or sorry, what they analyzed, of course, is that the key and the query and the value were all equal to constant and they were set to identity. Right now, what happens when we don't have that case? And now maybe the third uh, cool problem or important problem to analyze is what actually happens in the really more realistic setting, where we actually consider multiple heads and we also consider the feed forward layers. So in that case, the dynamics are governed by this equation where BT and WT are the feed forward components. And this summation over H is the multi-head attention. So now if you remove the summation over H, remove sigma, remove W, remove B, you'll actually recover what we had before, before we said V, Q, and K to identity. So now if you don't do that, and then you actually consider it, that's how the evolution will look like. The BT, WT, and also sigma, sorry, so sigma is the nonlinearity in the feedforward layer. And then you have the summation, which is the multi-head attention. And now you will have a matrix per attention, right? And uh, K, Q per attention query matrix, K per attention, VH per attention, uh, right, per, per attention head. So you'll have a Q per head, K per head, and V per head. And then BT and WT are the feed forward network weights and biases. And sigma is like the Lipschitz non uh, 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 Lipschitz nonlinearity that we include in a feed forward network. So what can we say about this system, right? Will there exist clusters? How will they behave, right? Asymptotically, what will happen? What's the geometry of those? We have no clue, right? So they pose that as an interesting question. And then finally, right? 
the last problem they also mention is what if we actually consider the Q, the K, V, not only heads and also uh, feed forward and sigma, i.e. nonlinearity, but also we have these matrices varying over time, maybe due to learning or maybe due to backpropagation, maybe they are behaving depending on a uh, different time scale because we update them in, in you know, different time scales, not, not in the same way we update the other parameters, what actually happens in these evolutionary systems, right? So what, what can we consider the time varying queries, right? Uh, what would happen if we consider uh, those time varying queries? So that's some other very interesting question uh, that, uh, that could be answered as well. So, so the reason I made this talk is because um, uh, I know a lot of very awesome mathematical people, and they're very excited to kind of work on, on machine learning problems. Uh, and I thought this paper is maybe one step, right, uh, that could allow us to uh, a kind of, you know, maybe get more people involved, right, uh, 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 you know, with uh, with uh, w w between machine learning and mathematics. Um, and uh, and and those are very very exciting questions to to try to understand uh, and to study. So I hope uh, uh, this helps a bit and you liked it. And uh, yeah, please uh, let me know if you're ever excited about those types of questions to work on them. I'll be, be very happy to uh, kind of uh, try to collaborate together on those. Uh, so with this, I would like uh, to end, and I will uh, see you uh, next time. So thanks a lot.